divide by 3. 14 divided by 3 is, what is it, about 400? 400 something? USD. Yeah. Okay, we changed that. Now, a lecture, when I first started, it was 2,000 Malaysian ringgit. So, 2,000 divided by 3, that is about, say, 700 yeah, USD. Now, my young colleagues, when they join the university, it is 5,000 divided by 3. It's about 2,000 something, sorry, 1,000 something USD. Yeah? They, we have to change. We have to push up the chain. And lastly, improve rural basic infrastructure and improve urban public transport. Professor Mahmoud in the conference presented about what his research on the public transport in Malaysia. Because we saw that for a population that is 28 million, now we got 4 million of our people using public transport. If you think the traffic jam in Amman is bad, think again. In Malaysia, it's two hours. In Kuala Lumpur, it's two hours. So now we're getting a lot of people into the public transport. Okay, that is the government transformation program. The economic transformation program, there's 12 critical areas called the national key economic areas where we develop our economy. First, the Greater Kuala Lumpur Klang Valley area. Now, when we talk about similarity to Jordan, you're looking at Oman, sorry, not Oman, Aman. If you push up to Erbil and push down, Karak. sorry? Karak. Karak. Okay. Can you develop that whole stretch? Because I think going to Akaba is too far. But can you actually develop the economic infrastructure from Erbit down to Karak? That's what we did. In Malaysia, we divided the country into zones. So we have the Northern Economic Corridor, Central Economic Corridor, Eastern Economic, Cor economic Corridor, and then the East Malaysia Economic Corridor. Each of these corridors, we call them corridors, we focus on developing the economic strength of that area. So for example, the greater Kuala Lumpur Klang Valley, we develop commerce, making it a financial hub. We move our Aman, our capital city, from, uh, capital city is still Kuala Lumpur, the, the government center. We move from Kuala Lumpur to Putrajaya. So all administrative, is done in Putrajaya. So if you want to drop a bomb in Putrajaya, it will, the whole government system will collapse. Not so. The government has built ways of actually spreading it out. So if anything happens to Putrajaya, we can still function in other areas. But you know, I hope that doesn't happen that way. The, the point is, Kuala Lumpur becomes the financial hub. Yeah. and commerce. Our oil, gas and energy, and that's where Uniten comes in, we found that we, our supply is only about 20 years. We are one of the oil producers, but our supply for the country only about 20 years. In 20 years, we are going to run out of oil. Now, Jordan is lucky. What I understood, you don't have oil. Yes. Yeah. So when you don't have anything, you can start with everything, right? So, yes. you, can choose anything. you can choose anything. Now, the point is, what I notice of Jordan is that you have all other renewable energy possibilities. You have the sun, you have the wind, you have, uh, just how we were at Hamamat Ma'in. Yeah. To be massaged by the hot water mm. and seeing the, the cave. You have all of this renewable energy, but who's harnessing it? The Ishari are doing it. Why not the Jordanians? Because from the Dead Sea, I can see. And from the literature, again, yeah, you see, read, read the literature, I can see. Their productivity in Jordan per Square, sorry, per uh, mile square is 
higher than anywhere else in the world. In terms of productivity, in terms of the agriculture, in terms of anything. Where can, why can't we do it? Not as we do it, but we ask the same question in Malaysia. Yeah? Now, financial service and, sorry, technology. Financial service and wholesale, that is now a major contributor to our GDP. Palm oil and rubber, you, and I think if you heard Prof uh, Mahmoud say, we were the biggest producer after independence. Now, powers that be said, let's control this and make Indonesia. Well, they think they are smart, we are smart. Third, our companies move into Indonesia and become the producers of palm oil in Indonesia. 30% of what they produce in Indonesia comes from Malaysian companies. Okay? You must learn the game. You must understand what they're doing. Tourism. Is tourism a big contributor to the Jordanian economy? How much? Tourism, you're, you're living on a landmine. You, sorry, not landmine. Uh, you're living on a golden mine. Because what I see in Jordan, in terms of tourism, you really can make money. People are going to Petra. 50 J-O, sorry, 50 J-E, Jordanian, per foreign visitor. We don't like to spend money. That's okay. No, it's one but it's only 2 J-E for local. Yes. No, I mean, the, our government, they don't like to spend money to make it a friendly and attractive right. place to do it. In Malaysia, tourism is the third yeah. biggest if our, if our Dead Sea, in any Arab country, another Arab country, or any country different than Jordan, it, not, it will not be like this. Okay. As future business leaders and hopefully politicians, bear this in mind. Bear this in mind. Next, communication content and infrastructure. I understand that Jordan is now JIC. You're trying to connect the whole country. You have an uh, initiative now for JIC. Jordan Information Something. Um, whereby now, infrastructure-wise, you're getting the whole country linked. You have three major providers, right? You have Orange. Yes, yes, yes. Right. For your MBA project people, study that. Okay. So, then education. Can somebody tell me the time? Six o'clock. Okay. okay, good. I'm on time. Education, agriculture, and healthcare. We combine our healthcare with tourism. People, Pulau Pinang, Pinang is now a healthcare tourism center. People from around Southeast Asia and sometimes around the world come to Penang to have vacation and be operated on. If you have cataract, you have eye problem, mm -hmm. you have any problem that you need to take care of, come to Penang. Penang? Yes. Penang. You, you get your medical thing done while vacationing. We link tourism and healthcare together. Yeah. We have the same thing in Jordan. We, we link them also. Yeah. Right. How much is it providing income to the, the company? Yeah. Yeah. That's where the intellectual capital comes in. Somebody has to think about this. Somebody has to make the connections. We need money. You need brain. <laughs> money <laughs> comes later. see the value of doing it. Now, the last few slides, because I need to answer Ruba's question, she's waiting so long, too late. All of these reforms were undertaken, and Mao people are not happy. Yeah? Competition, standardization, and liberalization. Now, all companies who want to operate and uh, export to Europe, all must 
must be certified by our SIR, our standard score. They must have ISO 9000 and all of the other ISOs in order for their product to be able to be exported to Europe and any other country. Halal is another requirement. Okay. Public finance reform, public service delivery, narrowing of disparity between the different population groups, reducing government role in business. Previously, government was doing everything. Now, no. Government, govern. Business, generate income. Split the two. Previously, that led to, uh, led to corruption. Now, no. Because if you say that I can get my visa in one day, you better make sure I get my visa by one day. If you don't, I will call a line that goes straight to the Prime Minister's office. Yeah? We have a, a, what we call the Bureau Aduan, which is under the purview of the Prime Minister's office. Every month, they generate report on all of the 700-some government agencies on who is not meeting what. And the Minister concerned will hear about it on Wednesday cabinet meeting. Walk the talk. All right. Now, our budget, reinvigorating the private investment, intensifying human capital, enhancing the quality of life and strengthening public sector delivery. So, based on the two critical factors, technology driven and market driven, I've shown you our national mission. Here's how we're doing it. For market-driven innovation, that means short-term, we let the private industry aggressively pursue market-driven innovation to capture short to medium-term opportunities for value creation. I saw that anything that is top of the line that I can find in China, I can find in Jordan now. What is the latest iPad? What is the latest Samsung? What is the latest whatever? You have it. You even have a mall touch that has the branded names up to date. They just, what they call, uh, run, uh, do, do the runway in Paris, Milan, and you already have it in Jordan. You have that already. Okay? That is market driven. Now, the technology driven, the government now, in Malaysia, and I show you later, the government has identified nine critical areas that we need to develop in order to be a key economy. If any of the lecturers, if your research is not in that area, I'm sorry. Very good research, but we will not fund you. I sit on that committee, I sit on the Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation Selection Committee Review. I also sit on the Ministry of Higher Education Review of grants. If you don't follow what the government dictates as the areas critical to the development of the nation, we will not fund. However, that does not mean that you cannot find other fundings. You can. But priority is given to these areas. Okay? So, moving right along. Ah, here it is, the, the missing picture. Just now, the National Innovation Model, remember? I got half of them there and half of them here. Okay, funding, market, SMEs. 98% of our businesses in Malaysia are small and medium enterprises. Small means not large. Not large. The large are those from America, from all of the big countries. The rest of them are Malaysian based. Money is pumped for them. Fiscal incentive. Fast track for I. SME, innovation-based SMEs, and provide SME the assets, uh, assets to research for technology. For example, any new creation that is or innovation that is created in the universities, we have an annual exhibition called the Malaysian Technology Expo. We bring the SME to us and say, would you like to take this on? And commercialize it. Innovative human capital, entrepreneurial education. Now, all students, regardless whether they're pharmacy or engineering or what have you, are taught entrepreneurial education. 
portfolio or incentives, new programs with university industry and administrative infrastructure, cross ministry. This is the challenge that Ruba was talking about, our challenge. Now, I don't want to define human capital, we already done that, but I want to go on. This is our model. Now, is it useful for Jordan? You decide. For us, we realize that innovation resources, the most important resource is the human part. Then the material. Yeah? That will come later. And the program, you notice, the focus is at SMC. Sorry, SME. Small medium enterprises. How to link this to that? And then multinational. Because we also know that the multinational, they have the technology, they have the facility. Yeah? So what we do is, you have Motorola. Under Motorola, you have the small medium enterprises as their vendors. You bring, put your people here so that they are trained by these people. Yeah? Outcome, knowledge, intangible assets, improved institutional system, and the networking is a loop. Again, you may find your own model. There is the Japanese model, there is Korean model, there's Taiwan model, there's UK model, Australia model, New Zealand model. Many models around the world. Yeah? Turkish, yeah. Okay? So, look at those models, adapt and adopt. Don't create from scratch. Yeah? Lastly, remember I told you what happened? From the first Malaysia plan, every five years since independence, we have our development plan. So up to the sixth Malaysia plan, it was still P economy. Money is pumped into developing human resources. So we created an act, Human Resource Development Act, and then we created a fund whereby all companies, regardless of size, 1% of your income will go towards training. You put in that 1% of your income into HRDF and you apply from that money to do training for your people in order to get it back. The government, being very kind, will match whatever you request. So, for example, you put in 1 million, the government will match 1 million. So, in actual fact, you have 2 million training grants. Then, we have National Apprentice Scheme whereby any students going through their, remember you asked about experience, at the baccalaureate level, any students who went through their practical training for six months, if they put through the apprentice scheme, when they finish, they are the first choice for employment. That means you must do well during your practical training so that you are considered for training. Now, during the 7th Malaysia Plan, remember 1996 to 2000, in 1999, we shift to K-Economy, the budget changed. From Human Resource Development in 2008, it focused on Human Capital Development since 2006 onwards. You can see in the division of the budget, you can even see in the reports, the money have been, the, the, the composition changed overnight. Obvious difference in investment as well as the focus of education system to provide strong foundation for developing human capital via improving the access to and quality of education. I went to Madaba just now on the way to Hamad, Hamad uh, Main, and my uh, student told me that the primary education here is not good. Okay? Change that. You must provide strong primary education that leads to the secondary education. So from K to 6 to 12 must be strong before they can become human capital when they get to the university. If this is not strong, you have a problem up here. Now, the, the positive side, what I understand of the Jordanian situation, you have many people already at the baccalaureate level now, they are just like the Zaitun plant during a cold spell. They are about to bloom, but they are not blooming. 
Your role now is to make them free. How to bring that out? They believe they have all this knowledge. They are not picking up. This is challenge. Yeah? Now, strengthening and improving the curricula of early primary and secondary education. Let me share with you what happened in Korea. Korea was more drastic than us. They call it the miracle of the Hans River. They harness the power of education and their minister, sorry, their pre president said that education creates talents and talents create future. Korea said we want to be the powerhouse, talent powerhouse of the world, not the country, the world. Korea became a powerhouse of talent and prepared human capital through education and new scientific and technological breakthrough to drive the economic growth. Now, people, is the ministry in Jordan and in Malaysia ready for total change? Korea did. Three ministries, Ministry of Science and Technology, Ministry of Education, and I'm not sure what was the third ministry, were combined. Sorry, two ministries, not in three. Uh, uh, two ministries, because Malaysia is, we have three. They combine the Ministry of Science and Technology and Ministry of Education so that from kindergarten, the students are trained in science and technology. Malaysia, and I show you our problem, this is the fourth initiative, again, all education. Here's our problem. We have a, what we call multi-ministry approach. We have 35 ministries. Whenever we want to do anything, especially in human capital, it involves all 35 industries. That's ministries. And you can understand, ministries being ministries. Bureaucracy is able to coordinate. Yeah? Bureaucracy, politics, what have you. Can we be like the Korean? No. Yeah? Oops, I did it again. See, my hand wants to finish early. We have to change that. In industry, we try to get the private sector to contribute. The private sector is asking, why should I contribute? Because I'm in it to make money. Yeah? Now, academia, our challenge was, we have all these brains, but we don't have resources. So, these three people, GIA, have to come together. So lastly, if I just push this, through our R&D, the government channeled the money to the Ministry of Science. Previously. Now, Ministry of Higher Education. To boost R&D and innovation. We created research university and high, higher institution center for excellence. For example, what is the technology that Jordan can take the lead of? What technology can Jordan be the leader of? Nano technology, we already have the West. Okay. What technology? Medical. You say medical. How do you harness this? I'll give you an example. Remember earlier we were talking about human capital, human resource, and intellectual capital? One of the, I, I, I don't know whether it's interesting or it's just me. I was very surprised that you grow bananas in the Dead Sea area. Yes, yes. Now, you must say, Zainab, my God. It's nothing, it's just bananas. Now, a human capital person, when he sees the banana, do you think he sees banana? No. What do I see? Yeah, I see money. Yeah. I see intellectual property. Brazil, they are bananas are called plantain. Jordanian, what is your banana called? It's not moose. Must 
happening, intellectual property, that banana will not grow anywhere else in the world, will it? It's a special breed of banana. Do you understand the genetics of it? Now, I'm talking to the you know, agricultural engineers. Do you understand the genetics of it? You do. Is it patented? Is it patented? Yes. Because Dr. Ahlam yesterday showed that there is, there is no pattern from Jordan. Okay? First thing you must do is pattern your banana. Secondly, some of this IC in this room, the intellectual capital in this room, or this, this country, need to study the banana. We did that for our rubber. We now have the genome study of the rubber tree. And next is the palm oil tree. Because the Western people are coming in to our jungles and finding cure for HIV of our traditional plants. They pattern it that in the future, if you want to use that plant to cure, you have to pay a royalty. So, yes. You must now talk about human capital and intellectual capital, not human resources worrying about who's going to be managing or planting your bananas. It's okay. You have a lot of foreign people coming into the country who can provide you that human resource. You can ask them. We have a big problem with the land. Right. Solve it. We need the water. We don't have the water. And that means there was water. That intellectual capital guy, who is a water expert, need to solve that problem for you. Why? Let me show you. These are all the research grants in Malaysia. These are all of the priority areas in Malaysia. Food security, if something happened to your banana, it's going to affect you. Because the trademark of Jordanian hospitality is you have a basket of fruits. And in it is banana, apple and oranges. I went to four houses in four days. The same, the same. It's the same thing. It's the same banana. I'm still asking, what is the name of the banana? And it's mousse. It's not mousse. Yeah? You have to a brand. It has to have a brand name. Okay? And you notice here, I'm here at Energy Security. Yeah? Medical and healthcare is our first priority. If you say that you are, you better get your act together. Water security, because in Malaysia we have a lot of water, so not that we're worried about, not worried about it, we're worried because in 50 years, we don't have enough water in Malaysia. Yeah? Think about it. In 20 years, we don't have petroleum. In 50 years, we don't have water. I'm not sure if I'm living that long, but I hope not. You know? <laughs> you can live without petroleum, but you cannot live without water. Yeah? So... Lastly, ladies and gentlemen, seven lessons learned for you to take home. Whether this is something that is going to be applicable to Jordan and whether you can help solve the country's problem. My seven students in Malaysia is trying to solve this problem. You should do it here. First, we find that human capital development is an integral strategy of deliberate economic development plan. Deliberate economic it must be spelled out. Major investment and reform in education system from early to higher education. Your education system. Remember, one of my PhD students is looking at higher education? You need to reform that. Take a look at it. Coordination and collaboration between government, industry and academia. The multi-ministry mobilization and facilitation. Now, Korea said merge the ministries. Malaysia, politically, we cannot because we have multiracial. Each race tends to be dominating in different ministries. How do you bring this together? Yeah? Lastly, fiscal and regulatory incentive. In academia, inculcate a culture of excellence. People, one of the problems I have with my MBA students is that 
they think that coming to the MBA is just training. It's not training. It's investment. You know, when I ask them, can you write your paper using proper APA format? Bro, why? <laughs> In order for your knowledge to be accepted worldwide, to be in ISI reference journal, you must know how to write scientifically. So it's not because Prof. Zainal like it to look nice, no. It's because I want your work, and all my students, they tend to be the first author. And one of my PhD students, in short law, is now even countering theory. He's from Jordan. I want a Jordanian, the next Nobel Prize winner, you can compete with us, Malaysia. The next Nobel Prize winner in 2020 or 2050, Jordan. Okay. And lastly, inculcating performance culture in the government sector. No more corruption. Zainal, that's a tall order. Yes. With the right incentive, it can be done. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, I give to you what we did in Malaysia. Ruba, have I answered your question? I will leave the materials on the desktop. You can download it. You can even go into the internet. Find out more about it. So, I hope that, and I wish you good luck, and I hope that you can try to solve the problems that you are facing, just as we are trying to solve our problem. Okay? With that, wabillahi taufiq wa hidayah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you.